Welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Shutter Speed. I'm David Molnar, your photography mentor, and in this lesson, I'm gonna be teaching you how to choose the right shutter speed, and I'm gonna be giving you a cheat sheet so that you will know exactly what to set your shutter speed at in any situation. Just so you know, this video is part of a 10-part video series that accompanies the most helpful blog article in the entire world on shutter speed. And on that article, I have an amazing free cheat sheet that I would love for you to download where I talk about all the stuff in this lesson and many of the other lessons that are in this free video series. So if you are reading, or if, sorry, if you are watching this video anywhere else but on davidmolnar.com forward slash shutter dash speed, then go over there. Go to, that, go to that link just below this video so that you can download the cheat sheet, see the illustrations, the charts, the diagrams, and all the other videos in this free video series. It is the best place on earth to learn about shutter speed. Okay, moving forward. I wanna quickly recap what a long and a slow shutter speed do before we jump right into the starting places for where you should set your shutter speed. Now remember, a long shutter speed does two things. It allows a lot of light to come in, and it also will allow for motion blur. So keep that in mind. Long shutter speed, also known as a slow shutter speed, will allow a lot of light to come in, and it will also allow you to capture, capture motion blur. Now a short or fast shutter speed will actually freeze motion, okay? And it will let less light come in. So a long, shutter speed or a long exposure allows a lot of light and allows motion blur. A short exposure or a fast exposure or a fast shutter speed freezes motion and doesn't allow as much light to come in. With that in mind, we need to talk about something we haven't addressed at all yet in this video series, and that is camera shake, okay? What is camera shake? It's pretty obvious what it is. It's when the camera shakes and what this actually um, does, you guys have all seen this in your images, most likely, at least I have, maybe you're perfect, but I'm not, okay, is when you have those images where they are blurry and you think maybe you're out of focus, but what it actually might be is you physically not being able to hold the camera still because they're heavy and the lens might be like making, you know, causing your hand to dip down or something like that. So this is camera shake. If you're actually taking a picture and your camera shakes while you're taking a picture, um, then your image actually might be blurry. That's camera shake. Well, there is an amazing rule that can help you avoid and conquer camera shake, okay? So that you can take crisp images every single time. That rule is called the one over focal length rule, also known as the reciprocal rule. Here's how it works. If your lens is 100 millimeters, like a lens just like this, this is a 100 millimeter lens, okay? Then you should not have a longer shutter speed or a slower shutter speed than 100, okay? So if your shutter speed, sorry, if your lens is 100, you should not have an 80th of a second shutter speed. Your slowest shutter speed that you should have is 100th. If you follow this rule, that will help you avoid camera shake. So let's do a quick practice demonstration. If you have a 200 millimeter lens, okay, this one's not, this is only 100, but if you do have a 200 millimeter lens, what is the slowest shutter speed that you should go to? 200th of a second. It's like not rocket science. It's actually pretty easy, right? People just say the reciprocal rule because it's basically the same. If you have an 800 millimeter lens, what is the slowest? Can you go to a hundredth of a second? Nope. Can you go to 200th of a second? Nope. Because your lens is 800 millimeters. You can't shoot slower than 800th of a second. Now there is a caveat there. Okay, there's a couple, there's actually a couple caveats there because um, you cannot, as a human being, hold a camera still for longer than 1 60th of a second, okay? Most likely. There are a few people that have trained themselves to hold their breath, to kind of really like brace, they've held, they hold their camera in a, like the most sturdy way to really capture maybe a 50th or a 40th of a second. But in general, generally speaking, generally speaking, 
um, you cannot hold your camera still for longer than a 60th of a second. So the one over focal length rule kind of like stops at, you know, what would be 60 millimeters, okay? So if you have a uh, 50 millimeter lens, you still need to shoot at a 60th of a second. Now, here's the other thing. This lens actually, I think, actually has it. Um, image stabilization, okay? There's a lot of um, lenses these days that have image stabilization built into them. Sometimes it's called VR for vibration reduction. And this actually can help you avoid things like camera shake, okay? You can push that limit a little bit further beyond, or I should say slower, than a 60th of a second. You might be able to hold the camera still at a 30th of a second, possibly a 25th of a second. Um, I wouldn't go much below that. And that's if you're being really careful and you're being really intentional to be really still. If you have image stabilization, you might be able to, might, you might be able to get away with holding your camera handheld at a slower shutter speed, slower than 60th of a second. But I don't really recommend it. I recommend you shoot most of your images not uh, slower than a hundredth of a second, okay? Or 125th of a second. All right, so with that in mind, um, if you have a tripod, of course, you can shoot for 20 seconds or 30 seconds. That doesn't matter. I'm only talking about handheld. So let's take a look at some starting places for you to set your shutter speed in some different situations. So as you can see here, that the longer duration of time would be 20 seconds that's listed here. And that's for like capturing stars in the night sky, um, really trying to let a lot of light soak in. You can see the five to 10 second range for maybe writing with light. Some people call it light painting, uh, where you maybe see sparklers and all sorts of stuff. Uh, two seconds for fireworks. Um, and then I'm gonna kinda, kinda go up to a 60th of a second, because remember that is the slowest that you can do for hand holding the camera. So everything below that, a 20th of a second, an eighth, all of these other listings down here, blurring fast moving water, slow moving water, all of those things have to be on a tripod so that you just don't look like you have crazy camera shake. So you have to put a tripod for anything slower or a longer duration of time than a 60th of a second. All right, so one 125th of a second is for maybe just everyday photos for landscapes and stuff like that. I actually try not to shoot slower than 125th, um, pretty much like at any time because sometimes my hands are shaky, all right? And this is great. This Notice this one for all of you moms and grandmoms and dads and one 250th of a second. This is kind of a number that I want you to pay attention to because if you shoot slower than a 250th of a second, there's a really, really good chance that your kids are gonna show up blurry. Does this mean that you could not you could not shoot at a 100th of a second or a 60th of a second? No, you could, but there's a really good chance that your kids are moving around just because if they're like my kids, they can be a little crazy and you wanna make sure and shoot at a fast enough shutter speed to capture a crisp shot of them. All right, so we have like football player running, 500th of a second, action sports, maybe something that's going even faster, like someone swinging a baseball bat or something like that, um, a thousandth of a second, birds flying, as you saw in some previous example lessons, a two thousandth of a second, maybe extremely fast moving objects like a race car or something. So these are great starting places for you to set your shutter speed so that you can capture the motion blur if that's what you want, allow light to soak in your image if that's what you want so that you can capture the night sky or so that you can freeze the motion regardless of whether it's just your kids playing in the playground or whether it's freezing sports and uh, other fast moving objects. These are some great starting places. So make sure you download the cheat sheet because there's a lot more than just the stuff that we just showed you here. All right, so in the next lesson, we're going to talk about how to actually change your shutter speed on a camera that looks just like yours, regardless of whether it's a Canon, a Nikon, or a Sony. I'm so excited. It's going to be awesome, and I'll see you there.